Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Japanese hoverbike debuts at Fuji Speedway. Also Scale Wings 70% Scale P51 kit, now shipping, and F15EX completes first test mission at Nellis. Happy Friday, you survived the work week. We have a great show for you ahead of the weekend. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Japanese hoverbike debuts at Fuji Speedway. A new face in the advanced air mobility or AAM adjacent market has appeared in Japan touting their world's first practical hoverbike at the Fuji Raceway. The X Turismo Limited Edition model will be sold north of half a million dollars, with only 200 units available. Powered by a combination of battery power and traditional gas engine, it can carry a payload of 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. Cruise time is estimated at half an hour, with a to be disclosed max speed rumored to be about 62 miles per hour. At the demo, crowds watched a tightly leathered pilot equipped just like the track superbike riders stride out and, after a brief pre flight, mounted the X Turismo. The pilot thumbed the ignition and the crowd was treated to a rising crescendo. A sonic medley of a wide open sport bike engine with the loud, high pitched thrum of a very large drone. After the noise stabilized to a constant grating buzz, the machine ascended and stabilized at 15 feet or so, then began hovering in place, facing the stands and advancing for the photographers at a brisk, walking pace. After two slow 180 degree turns, the pilot landed once again. After the break, Sean Tucker gets new props for GB1 Gamebird. More news after these messages. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Sean Tucker gets new props for GB1 Gamebird. World champion aerobatic aviator Sean Tucker has received fueled approval for the use of a Hartzell Composite three-blade Talon performance prop on the first of four tandem seat GB1 game birds operated by his new team. The U.S. Composites game bird features a 303 horsepower Lycoming AEIO 580 engine. The lightweight unlimited aerobatic competitor is ordinarily plenty fast in stock trim, but Tucker says the Talon brings out the best of the plane. Laser strikes increases again this year. The FAA has noted the increase in laser strikes for aircraft in 2021, as the industry sees the highest number of incidents since 2016. The FAA has received more than 7,000 reports of laser contacts, already exceeding the 2020 total of more than 6,000. Those found shining their lasers at aircraft face FAA fines of $1,000 per violation with a cap of $30,000 for multiples. The FAA has only issued 120,000 in fines in 2021. 
an unsurprising metric given the steep difficulty of identifying perpetrators on the ground. Cadet earns SPATS award. Gabriel Brown received the distinction on October 3rd, joining a club of less than 2,500 throughout the history of the Civil Air Patrol. A member since 2017, Brown is cadet commander of the Georgia Wings Gwinnett County Composite Squadron and has participated in three encampments, National Blue Barrett and a regional cadet leadership school, earning by less than one half of 1% of cadets. The General Carl A. Spatz Award represents presents the highest achievement a Civil Air Patrol cadet can attain. Boeing reports third quarter results. Boeing has reported a third quarter profit of more than $15 billion, with higher commercial airplane sales and service volume amidst an improving economy. Though the company seems to have suffered a decade's worth of bad luck in less than a year, the outlook is fairly positive, with strong sale interest and service agreements. Boeing says progress on the global return to service of their 737 MAX is smooth, likely helped along by rumors that Chinese authorities may authorize it once again in the coming months. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. Scale Wings 70% Scale P-51 Kit now shipping. Many classic aircraft lie sadly out of reach of the average pilot, with production lines shut down years prior. The few surviving warbirds in the world find their value increasing with each passing year. Scale Wings aircraft has a remedy, a P-51 Mustang replica at 70% scale of the original with ultra-lightweight carbon fiber manufacturer. Now shipping their quick build kit, they call the SW-51 Mustang. Scale Wings says their version of the legendary fighter is the most accurate on the market. In standard trim, the kit has a MTOW of 1,600 pounds, owing to its old carbon construction, control elements, seats, and electrically actuated landing gear. When designing their kit, Scale Wings took painstaking efforts to replicate the seams, the rivets, and the screws inherent to a metal aircraft fuselage. Those lines and textures come to life even in a composite body, taken to the next level with appropriate attention to paint detail. The standard kit includes the wings, fuselage, stabilizer, control surfaces, and systems, landing gear, both seats, and their coverings and fuel tank system. Optional additions include a firewall forward kit, which includes a new Rotax 915IS and MT4 blade propeller. The launch edition kits are priced at a starting point of roughly $138,000. After these messages, F-15EX completes first test mission at Nellis. Those details after the break. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link Hand Control Unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the record out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Welcome back. F-15EX completes first test mission. The newest version of the Air Force's favorite workhorse, the Eagle, has completed its 
first ever operation test mission at Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas. The F-15 EX Eagle II was accompanied by its predecessors, F-15Cs and F-15Es, for a week-long simulated mission to evaluate its performance and serviceability compared to the legacy aircraft. Introduced in 1972, the original Eagle has been developed into a potent tool in the Air Force arsenal after five decades of experience, enhancement, and development. The Air Force accepted delivery of the two currently remaining F-15EXs last spring, hoping it will survive fleet cuts in the Air Force inventory to fewer types and models. Current plans would leave the Eagle to the F-35 Lightning, the F-16 Falcon, and the A-10 Thunderbolt, along with an upcoming sixth-generation fighter under a 4 plus 1 concept for the streamlined fleet. The test pilots evaluating the aircraft have been carefully evaluating the improvements and differences in preparation for their official initial test reports. The EX replaces the traditional hydraulic flight control system of the C model with a digital fly-by-wire computer control system. The instrumentation throughout the cockpit is modern, adaptable for future weapon systems, and software integration with notable enhancements to electronic warfare. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.